Hello again. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm actually feeling a little stressed out, but I'm going to go forward with this video anyway. So I I'm starting a new series. Uh, this series of videos is going to be about using data in processing. So we'll look at a lot of things. Where do we find data? How do we get data? What if the data's from a file or from a URL? Or how do I chop it up? Or how do I sort it? Or well, there's lots and lots of what format is it in? What's an API? There's so many things to talk about and cover here in this set of videos. But before we can do any of that, the foundation, the building block, the thing that we need to be comfortable with and happy with and just feeling good about our day with is this idea of a string. What is a string? Now, in fact, a string is something that's quite familiar to you, probably. I don't know who knows who you are or why you're watching this video, but Chances are you've seen a string before. In fact, if you watched some earlier videos from just a couple ago, we were, lo we were using strings. We loaded an image. Maybe we had something on a hard drive called a file.jpg. And it was some characters, and it was, and it was in between quotes. This is a string. A string is a sequence of characters uh, in between quotes. Now, I mean, actually, the in-between quotes part is just the way that we declare a string. The string itself is just this sequence of characters. And if, if we want to do anything that has to do with text, certainly we need a string. We need to, a way to represent that text. But in fact, most of the data we're going to look at, even if the data is all numbers, that data is going to come in as text. Um, so this is something we need to become comfortable with. So how do we, how do we make a string in processing? Well, a string is a data type. Uh, we now have a variable. I, I, made this I made up this wonderful, beautiful variable name s with the data type string. And what is the string? It is this sequence of characters. So uh, I think one of the things we can first start to look at in working with strings and processing is just drawing them to the, to the window. So let's, um, let's come back over here. And let's say we have a string s to be or not to be. And you know, obviously, I could say print line s and run this particular sketch. And we can see down here in the bottom, to be or not to be. That's our string. We, we're representing it as a variable, and we're printing it. Now, let's say what we actually want to do is draw it to the window. We know how to draw things. We can draw an image. You can draw a rectangle. You can draw a line. Uh, uh, we can draw a string also. So I can say text s. And then now I need to give an x and a y where I want that text to appear. So let's. Uh, put this in some arbitrary location right here. And we can see, there it is, our little tiny friendly string to be or not to be. It's there in the window. You can barely read it, though. Let's make it bigger. With, with shapes, we can set colors. We can set sizes. Text is no different. I can use the text size function. And I'm going to say text size uh, 64. And now I have my lovely string here, to be or not to be. OK, so one of the first things you might start thinking about is, hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm here to put text in my processing window. And the thing that means a lot to me is picking my font. That's my joy in life, is picking a font. And I don't like this font, whatever it just chose by accident or by default, which it looks like it's Arial or something like that. So one of the things you can do in processing is you can say text font. And I need to put something in there. <laughs> what goes in there? I need to reference a font. The way to reference a font is to make a pfont object. So I'm going to make a pfont object. And I'm going to say create font. And I'm going to use the font Georgia. That's one of my personal favorite fonts. And I'm going to run this sketch. And now we can see to be or not to be is in a different font. Isn't, isn't life good and happy and wonderful that we have? We can just pick whatever font we want now. OK. Uh, you know, the thing is, I'm kind of like, da, 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 you know, just uh, going through the motions here. Because in, in the end, I'm not less concerned about drawing text to the screen. I mean, that's, that's, a, not, that's something that to, to, <laughs> it's OK to be concerned with. But I'm trying to get to the data stuff, the parsing, the, the chunking of data. So let's actually get a little closer to that by looking at a slightly different way to draw this string. OK, so um, for, for, let's stay for the moment. Uh, um, OK, so I'm going to uh, move this string up. And uh, I'm going to draw it again. And what I want to do, 
Let's uh, put this down a little lower. Okay. What I want to do in the, the top is just the string. There it is on the screen. The bottom is also just the string. There it is on the screen. But I, I want a little thought experiment here. What if I were to color each one of these characters with a different color? What if I were to draw each character at a different size? What if I were to animate that string so that it like moves around the screen like a snake or wraps itself around on a curve? What if I want to visualize text in a more flexible and dynamic animated way? Now, I just said the point of all this is not about drawing text. It's about working with text as data. But actually, manipulating the way we draw this text will actually help unlock some of the clues to how we're going to work with text as data. So uh, how do we figure out, like, well, this is a string. This string, this string over here is a data type. And in fact, it's capital S, which means it's an object. An int is a primitive data type, like just a number. A float is just a number. A P image is an object, an image. It's got pixels. It's got width. It's got height. A string also has a lot of stuff. It's got this. This, this sequence of characters, but there are lots of other functions that we can to use, call upon this object to work, to manipulate and work with this string. Car at length uh, index of <laughs> uh, substring to lower case. There are lots and lots of methods that we can call to manipulate and play with these strings. And we're going to see all of these in the set of videos I'm recording today and later today and tomorrow and later this week, whenever it happens. So how do we find out about what these, fun what, what are the possible functions and what do they do? Well, uh, string is so commonly used in processing that, uh, and I wasn't really prepared for this. Unfortunately, I'm going to open up a browser window here and I'm going to say processing.org string. And that there is, in fact, oops, a reference page for strings in processing. And we can see a lot of those methods I listed over there. Here they are here. And there's some more information. You can click on them, and there's examples. I should point out, though, however, that ooh, I'm, <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I should point out going to happen to the other camera soon in a second. I should point out that uh, string really uh, it comes from Java. And in fact, you know, this is kind of like an awful place to be that's making me feel very uncomfortable inside. You know, actually, I, I, I rather like it and makes, but you know, anyway, the, whether the, the Java docs are, are very long winded with a, like way too much information, but, and, and a little bit hard to parse and find fault. But the point is, if you really want to find, dig into the, everything there is to ever know about a string, you can, string is a class that's part of Java, processing built on top of Java. We have access to everything you can do with strings in Java in processing. So I encourage you, uh, I'll try to leave some links for you to go look at that stuff. But I want to come back over here, and I want to start looking at some of these functions that we, use, that we can use to manipulate strings. Let's look at car at and length. OK, car at and length. Car at gives us an individual character at a specific index. Remember this thing that we, that I, that we talked about at some point called an array? An array might be some numbers or some objects or whatever it is. It's an ordered list of stuff. We access each individual element of the array by its index, starting with 0 and counting up. So this array, which has five elements, has in indices, index values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Guess what? This particular string that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 characters, each one of those characters can be referenced by an index also starting with 0, 8, the last one will be 7, the length of this string, you can't see those, uh, 0, uh, 7, the length of this string is 8, each character is referenced by its index. So if I want to, come back, if I want to look at and draw simply the first character, here we go, there's my T. If I want to draw the fourth character, there's my b. So this works. Car at works. Length, by the way, will give us the length of the string. So let's say I want to go through all of the characters in the string. I can do this. Now I'm going to draw every single character in the string. Oh, look, they're all on top of each other right there, because I drew them all at the location 10, 300. Now, before I go a little farther with this, 
there's a couple pieces of it. There's a kind of a key piece of information here. The, the, the mouse arrow is right there at the end of length. Look at that. That doesn't look, if you remember an array, <laughs> come over here. If I had an array, I would say vals.length. Length being a property of the array that gives me the length of that array, five. <laughs> I'm coming back over here. Look at that. Length has parentheses. Length is a function, a method of the string object. So even though it's very similar, it's an easy thing that you get tripped up on, even though it looks just like the length of an array, it's actually a function that has to be executed. It needs open and close parentheses for it to be called. So let's say we want to space these out. Uh, I'm going to uh, make up a variable called x. And I'll start it at 10. Whoops. And I'm going to, uh, in fact, we don't, uh, we can like, Put all this up here now. Um, I'm going to say uh, draw each character at x, and x equals x plus, I don't know, 32. Whoops, what did I do? Uh, int i equals 0. Let's run this. OK, now I have those characters spaced apart. Each one is spaced apart by 32 pixels. Hmm, that doesn't look right. The actual spacing, I don't know, you, you, you who know about these things like typography, that has a term like letting or kerning or something like that. You know, there's all these nice terms. I don't know about any of that stuff. But um, the, these characters are, are, are uh, this is obviously not right. So there's got to be a way around this. And in fact, in processing, there is a function called text width. If um, I were to draw, uh, uh, the function text width, sorry, gives me dynamically the width of any character that's being drawn in the window. So we can use text width to say, Draw the T. Now move by the width of that character and draw the O. Now move by the width of that character and draw the B. So I'm going uh, to uh, just add something here by putting each character in it a separate variable. And by the way, the car data type, which is a primitive type, is a data type for an individual character. So I'm looking at every single character in this string, which is a sequence of characters. Uh, I'm going to draw that character, and then I'm going to move by the text width of that character. And look, now the string looks just like the one above. Now we can start to do things like say, hey, uh, <laughs> give me a random uh, fill. Now we have a random color for each character, which we would not be able to do by drawing the text all at once. And now we also, I could do something like I'm going to actually change this and just say text size random 12 to 128. This I think is, illustrates the point even better that now each character is a different size, and, but yet the layout is still correct. So here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff you could try here. None of this is animated. So what if you have the text grow and shrink, or what if you have each character kind of like move around, or what if you have it not on a perfect line, but kind of on a curve? And, and I can show you this if you're following along with the learning processing examples. Uh, I'm going to go here to chapter seven. There's a couple that I'll just show you to open up. Um, so example 17.8. Uh, this is drawing the text along a curve. This is a pretty high degree of difficulty problem. But you know what you could think to yourself is actually, could I figure out how to draw a set of rectangles along a curve? If you can draw a set of rectangles along the curve, then you just need to place each character within that rectangle. There's, a, there's another function that I think, there's, a, there's another little piece of drawing text that I've kind of missed here, uh, which is text align. And uh, this is also going to be helpful too. If I say text align center, um, you can see that now that each character is aligned by its center, and you can see that it's, it's uh, off where it's, it's located. Uh, if I said uh, width divided by 2, you can see here now the text is centered on the screen. So text align, there's, you, know, you, you can look up, and there's a lot of this stuff in uh, processing. I'm going to go back to what it was before. Um, so that's something you can think about. The other thing you might think about uh, looking at is, and I'm going to go open up another example, which is... Uh, 17.10, oh boy, okay, so let's, uh, let's zoom in here. 
Um, and let's take a look at this. So look, this looks just like text on the screen. Each one of these characters is individually placed. There's actually an object, like a particle object for each one. It retains its own location. It retains that rotation information. And as I click the mouse, you can see they start to move around randomly. Uh, and then if I let go of the mouse, they're going to slowly come back to their original location. So these are the kind of ideas and experiments you could play with. Um, I didn't really go too far into actually the font stuff. I was, was very much skipping over that. One thing that I think is worth uh, uh, mentioning is here, let's just to talk for a minute about this create font function. The create font function is pulling fonts that are installed on your system. It's pull, pulling from the system fonts. And I could actually look at what all those possible system fonts are by, uh, by saying pfont.list. And this will, uh, this will dynamically pull up a list of all the fonts that are installed in the system. And I could, you know, I could just like pick one of these out and uh, put it in here, run this again, and we're going to see now I have a completely different font. So whatever fonts are available to you, you can use in processing. Um, the nice thing about this working in this rendering mode is that the fonts are being drawn as actual like shape data. They're not like images that are just being placed on the screen. So you can grow and shrink them. And even though I specified the size 64, it's going to dynamically uh, make everything look nice no matter what size you draw it at. You have to watch out the, if you're in a different mode, if you're in 3D or other modes, sometimes the font has to be rendered as an image. And then if you're starting to grow it or shrink it, it's going to look pixelated or squished. Um, there's also ways of uh, packaging a font with your processing sketch itself by including it in the data folder. So, you know, I'm kind of rambling here because you should have just stopped this and gone on to the next video because where we're getting to here, where we're hoping to get to is looking more about, is, is looking more closely at this particular string as data. We've seen car at length. Later, we're going to see index of substring and lo to lowercase. The next thing, though, that, however, that I really want to look at, which is a sort of key component of working with data uh, and strings, are the functions split and the functions join. So one of the first things that I think we can look at in terms of working with data is, I have all this stuff. It's this giant string. How do I split it up? It's all these numbers separated by commas. How do I split those up? It's a novel with a lot of words in it. How do I split that up and count all the words in it? So we're going to look at a few of these scenarios. And then we'll get even further to we'll get even further to say, like, oh, well, if the data is in a standardized format, like XML or JSON, what's XML? What's JSON? We'll talk about all these things as we get from video to video. For now, though, I would suggest to you that the first thing you might start with is just hard code some data, numbers, characters as strings. Try going through them by character by character. Try drawing it. Try, um, you know, what if you were to visualize each one of these um, not as the character itself, but as a rectangle with a color based on the character? There's so many things you could think of um, in terms of just playing with strings and drawing and processing. OK, so the next video, we're going to look at split and join. And I have to stop this now somehow.